Artastic, and today we're going to create an artwork that explores pattern and repetition. Let's make some art! Keep your eye open for Van Gogh's Starry Night. It's hidden somewhere in this video. To begin our artwork, we're going to draw our gecko, and then we're going to fill the surrounding area of the paper with patterns and repetition. We're going to start off in the top right corner and work our way down to the left. You're going to begin by drawing two circles that are on a diagonal. In each of those circles, draw another circle that's a little bit bigger and then two tiny circles. You're going to color in the remaining parts of the eye with whatever medium you're using to draw with. We're going to draw the nose and the rest of the head of the gecko. So the nose part is going to be like a letter U. And then you're going to draw two curved lines behind it. Then two parts that curve out. Next you're going to draw two slanted nostrils. And then we're going to add a long tongue. We're going to draw both arms and the legs. So we're going to draw two lines out with the back one coming out a little bit farther than the front. One arm, two parts in. Same on the other side. So keeping that back one a little bit longer, that just to, that's just to allow for an elbow. And then bring it forward. And then we're going to add four little gecko toes on each foot. And we can draw those using zigzag lines. I'm gonna, there we go. Perfect. Now we're going to draw two back legs and they're going to be a little bit thicker than the front ones. So um, actually before we do that, we're going to bring the neck and connect it to the arm and draw a nice long round body to where you like it and where you think you might want to have your back legs. Remember, we do need some space behind that to allow for a long tail. All right, I'm gonna do two lines that angle up toward the top of the page, two knees, and then I'm gonna come back down All right, another line in on each side. And then draw the back part of the leg. And now we're gonna draw some really long toes with some long zigzag lines. Just like that. One, two, three, four. And if you make one little one line a little bit too thin you can always just thicken up like that and you won't even notice all right so now i'm going to bring these lines inward to where i'm going to start the tail i'm going to pull my paper up so you can see it and now i'm going to draw one part of the tail with a zigzag or sorry a wavy line so a nice long curving wavy line and then we're going to draw the second one and it's going to start wide and then gradually go inward and become thin and connect to the end. Great. Now, before we continue and draw a border around this guy, you're going to decorate your gecko with whatever kind of patterns that you want. For my gecko, I'm going to draw a stripe down the center. But remember, each gecko is different, so you can look online or in books and find different patterns for geckos and try to copy a different pattern, or you can totally make up your own, whatever you want to do. So this gecko is gonna have a stripe, 
some spots, and maybe some stripes on the arms as well. Once you're done adding all the patterns on your gecko, you're going to draw a thin border around the entire gecko. Next we're going to divide our background up into sections and I'm going to make my sections more square. So I'm going to use a ruler to help me with that. First, I'm going to turn one part of this background into a square. Now I'm going to leave a gap because I want this to be a nice white border and then I'm going to start drawing the second section. So I'm going to pull it in just like that. So that way there's a, going to be a patterned section, a gap, which I'm going to keep white, and then another patterned section. I want all my sections to be different shapes because that's how I like it. So I'm not going to line them up, but you can do whatever you like. Depends on what kind of look you're going for. Once you're done separating your background into sections, you're ready to create patterns in each section and you're going to repeat the pattern throughout the section. You can use whatever you want to make your patterns. You can do different shapes and symbols and repeat those or you can do different lines. And I'm going to do a combination of both in each of these sections.
Next, we're gonna color in our artwork with some felt markers, but you can use whatever you want to use at home. For me, I'm going to be using some felt markers and then I'm gonna do some highlights and shadows using some white and black pencil crayon. And then I'm also going to paint with water in the background in each section to kind of make the washable felt marker bleed a bit so it kind of turns into a faded paint. I am gonna leave these borders on my own artwork white to create contrast to make things pop out a little bit more, but you can go ahead and color them whatever you want whatever you imagine for your own artwork. And if you don't want to do felt marker and if you feel like using a different medium to color your art piece, go ahead and use whatever your heart desires.
Not only can you use shapes or lines or words to create patterns, but you can also use colors to create patterns too. So in addition to some of the symbols I've drawn on my artwork, I'm also going to color them in a pattern as well. And of course, they're each going to repeat the patterns through each space, right? So each time it's going to repeat. So there's lots of different ways you can create patterns. You can create patterns with lines, with shapes, with numbers, and with colors. There are so many ways to create patterns and use them as a tool to add different textures or background elements to your artworks and repeating them through the artwork is only going to add interest to your art piece to make it interesting for the viewer to look at. The last thing you're going to do is, if you are intending on painting with your felt markers, you're going to just simply take your paintbrush and dip it in some water, and then you're going to slowly and gently paint with water. And what that's going to do is make the felt marker bleed, and it'll turn into a little bit of a paint. Now, when you are painting, and if you do want to keep this white, 
you're, wanna, you're going to want to make sure that you carefully paint along that line. So just carefully paint all along your background. As you can see it's not super dark the paint in the background but it really gives it a great texture and also you get a lot of great color variation and it also kind of creates a pattern too for example where I did did marker in every second stripe the paint became a lighter value of that orange and so it really creates a beautiful artwork that way and also gives a nice contrast if you do decide to leave these borders white now before we finish, the final thing I am going to do is I'm going to use my black pencil crayon and my white pencil crayon and I'm going to add highlights and shadows to this gecko to really, really make it pop off the page. Beautiful. And once you're done adding all your shadows and your highlights, your artwork is done. Artastic Nation, that's the end of this episode. Tune in every Tuesday evening for the premiere of the next episode. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. For more art tutorials, visit my blog at MsArtastic.com. Teachers, find my creative, high-quality art resources in my TPT store, Ms. Artastic. Finally, you can receive free 
art worksheets for kids by joining my newsletter by simply clicking the first link in my video description. All links are available in the description of this video. See you next time.